Welcome. This podcast is a collaboration of Religica and URI, United Religions Initiative. Iconic youth leader, global influencer, environmentalist, champions of children's rights, peace and sustainability campaigner, and passionate advocate of women's rights, 19-year-old Keshkashan Basu is a trailblazer. A powerful voice for future generations, she has spoken at over 75 United Nations and other global forums across 25 countries. Take a listen. What's inspired you in this way in your life? I've been in this field of sustainability and peace for the last 11 years now. When I was seven, I saw an image of a dead bird on television with its belly full of plastic, and that was deeply disturbing. I mean, it's disturbing to anyone, let alone a seven-year-old. And I decided that at eight years old, I would be old enough to start doing something on my own for the planet. Uh, I'm also born on World Environment Day, so I thought it was preordained that I would become an eco warrior. And that's on 5th June. So I started by planting a tree on my eighth birthday. And since then, there's been no looking back. And I started working at the ground level to like talking to my community, uh, restaurants, uh, neighborhoods, beauty saloons, and just telling them about why it was so important that they needed to think about the planet. And as I started growing older, and as when I started my organization, we started moving out into the other aspects of sustainability, such as peace, equality, environment. And what we learned was that everything is interconnected and you cannot achieve uh, one goal without achieving the other, specifically in terms of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So now we work on all aspects of sustainability that goes from nuclear disarmament to uh, protecting the environment, to protecting our oceans, to gender equality and many, many more. Some people might say, okay, here's an individual who at age seven or eight said, I'm going to be an eco-warrior. But the way you described it, it's not just something you do and say about yourself. Theoretically, you went from shop to shop. You talked to people in your community. That's how we could all begin, right, in our local community. What do you think it was? I know the image of a, of a bird with its belly full of plastic is traumatic. Mm-hmm. What is it in a hopeful way that inspires you even now? metaphorically, to go shop to shop, if I may, to get the message out there? I think that the hope that is still there amongst the people that we will be able to achieve a more sustainable world, I think that uh, keeps me going because if we lose all hope, then what are we working towards? Uh, That is why my organization is called Green Hope Foundation because it is very important to maintain that hope and that hope for a better world, a more sustainable world is what keeps me going. What does that world look like in 20 years that you see? Ideally, a sustainable world would be where we, as a society, we do not discriminate based on age, gender, race, sexuality, and all the uh, religion, all the other demarcations that we just impose on people. Everyone would accept the other person as someone who is different, but someone who is equal to them, that we, we are united in our diversity. That is what I would want as a community. And we would live in the world where we would be peaceful. There would be no war. We wouldn't have nuclear weapons. And we would live in a world where it's clean, green. We would be able to breathe clean air and we would not be polluting our oceans. And hope would still be there, but it would be that You know, we live in a world where we know that we are going to survive. Because right now, with all the problems in our world, we're like, oh my God, there's so many problems. Are we going to make it? But in that kind of world, we'd be like, okay, we've come so far and we will survive. Yeah. Do you feel like when you look at the generations before that Mm -hmm. have come, yeah. You know, I don't mean to make this necessarily intergenerational, but as a species, we've missed something, haven't we, about how we care about one another and how we care about the planet. How would you respond to that? I think that a lot of mistakes have been made, sometimes intentionally, and that's really bad. And sometimes we as a human race have discovered something, thought it was amazing, and then realized much later that it was not amazing at all. It was actually terrible. So I think that every generation has had its good and bad people who've 
done their bit for the community and for the planet. And I think that will probably continue for all of time because no one is the same, right? And you can't say that every generation is perfect. And we as a species, no one is perfect. So I think that mistakes have been made. But now that we've realized that these mistakes have been made as a species, and I, I think that we can take the lead and show the way forward and trying to rectify those mistakes. You've been credited as a trailblazer who has been challenging the status quo and mm -hmm. the social strictures that impede progress of future generations. I think you're speaking to that already now, but are, are there a couple of additional items or qualities or issues that you'd like to raise that really do impede our way forward? Specifically in terms of young people and children, I think the mindset that society has is that you're just a kid, what are you going to do? So I think that kind of mindset needs to change. Uh, and as an eight-year-old, when I started working, I faced that every step of the way, that people thought I was very cute, that I was just trying to do something for the planet, but they never actually took me seriously. And what I have learned in all the years I've been in this field is that my work speaks for itself. It does not matter how old I am. What matters is the work that I've done. So I think that kind of mindset and that mindset includes funding because as a youth organization, getting funding is is a big problem because you still have that mindset that why should I invest in a kid's organization? Like what are they going to do? So that is there as well. And it's kind of intersectional because you have so many other issues that depending on where you are, where you live, where you're from, which region you're in, you face a multitude of other problems. So apart from that fixed mindset that's already there, we as young people, we face a lot of other problems depending on where we are. But we have the strength and the resilience to push forward. And I think that is one of our greatest positives. Speaking of resilience, the Green Hope Foundation and the work that you do is international in scope. You have received a number of well-earned awards. You speak internationally in different mm -hmm. venues around the world. Yeah. Uh, you work with youth, women, men, others who are all engaged in these issues one way or another around the yeah. world. And you've earned that reputation through a lot of hard work. You may be 19, but this is just the beginning of something you've already been doing for 11 years yeah. already. So this is, you're halfway through a career, really think of it that way. Yeah. Still, after 11 years of experience, you have a number of things you could say about the nature of leadership that the world requires next. For those who are listening to this and saying, well, I want to be involved in my local community. What are the two or three things they need, not necessarily to do first, what are the two or three things they need to believe about their place in the world today? I think that if anyone wants to take action, they need to understand that whatever they do counts. And another thing is really important is that they have to be really passionate about what they want to do. Because if they suddenly have an idea one day and the next day they have an, like another idea and they're like, oh, I want to do this, but they're not really passionate about it, then that's not going to work. But if, if you're truly passionate about it, that passion will drive you to go forward and start doing something and just Believing in your capabilities, I think I think that's really, really important. And sure, it's very scary to start doing something on your own when others haven't done that or in, in your community or wherever else you are. But I think it's really important that the first thing to do is just believe in yourself. And if you're truly passionate about it, that will just take you places. Is there one story you have that stays with you that you think would also inspire a listener? And when I started Green Hope Foundation, I invited five of my friends to, if they wanted to be members and they agreed. And what started with five members is now an international organization in 14 countries across six continents uh, with over a thousand members worldwide. So I think that kind of impact that we've been able to make. I think that is really powerful. Like I look back sometimes and I'm like, wow, that is a long way that we've come. And our goal was never to be an international organization. We wanted to involve young people, children in sustainability. And we wanted to make sure that they had that opportunity to do something to solve the world's problems. And what we realized was that that kind of platform wasn't really there for children. And gradually it became an international organization. What we start as a small movement of change 
I think it can make a very big impact, whether it's just in your country or whether it's international. If you had to choose a question that today you believe we all need to be asking in the world, across cultures, across age and time, what is the question that comes to your mind that will be essential to our shared future? That question would be, what am I doing to help my community and my planet? I think a lot of the time we put the blame on other people. We blame our government, we blame policymakers, and we say that, okay, it, they should do something. But what am I doing to solve the problem? And there's a lot of things that can be done, like no matter where you are. And I think that's really important that we question, what can I do? Sure, there might be other problems, but... I need to be the one to start making a difference, whether it's just in my own life or whether it's in my uh, in the lives of uh, the people living in my community. So I think it's very important that we all ask ourselves that question. And I think if everyone does that and we stop blaming others and start doing something ourselves, I think I think that's really important. And that is absolutely essential for us working towards a sustainable world. If you had to say two values that shape your life, how those values are alive in your organization, in the Green Hope Foundation, and how the Green Hope Foundation is a gift to the world. Two values, I would say, are honesty and hard work. I think that in order to achieve anything, you really do need to put in the work. And through our ground level work that we've done, I think that has helped us to come this far. And I think honesty i mean that's such that is a value that i think everyone needs to have if you are a good honest person i think you are able to go very far in life and you might face more obstacles than someone who's dishonest but i think that as honest good honest people i think we are able to do much more good for not just for ourselves but for our community and our planet and i think we've seen as Green Hope Foundation, we've seen it in our work as well that, you know, we've been able to reach out to so many communities around the world and so many children around the world and imparting that same sense of honesty and hard work and even optimism. I think that is why we've been able to make such a big impact in so many places around the world. And Green Hope Foundation is a gift to the world because it's a, a platform where everyone can be themselves, everyone can follow their passion, and together we are trying to save our community and our planet from total annihilation. So I think it's a very good platform to come together to work towards a positive cause. If you would like to know more about United Religions Initiative, read stories of interfaith in action, visit www.uri.org. And to learn more about Religica and our allies, take a look at www.religica.org. Thanks.